Did you know you can make your next Disneyland visit 10 times better just by learning about the best ride hacks? Don't worry, we're going to fill you in on all of them today here on DFV Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. Disneyland and Disney California Adventure have over 40 different rides you can experience across two epic theme parks. Go ahead, you can ooh and ah if you want to. With all these rides, it's best you know exactly how to go about each and every one, which is why we got 50 points to cover for you today to help you maximize your time at these Anaheim parks. And speaking of maximizing your time, go ahead and scan the QR code on your screen. Isn't that so cool? If you'd like our three perfect days in Disneyland guide for free. This is a great digital resource to have on hand if you're looking to plan a weekend getaway in the near or distant future to the original happiest place on earth. Ooh, there's a little trivia for you. Happiest place on earth is Disneyland. Most magical place on earth is Disney World. All right, number one on our list, predicting the crowds. Disneyland crowds can get thick, but knowing when the ebb and flow of guests can be at the park's worst and most reasonable will help you still accomplish every ride you want to in just two to three days. During big conventions like D23 Expo, for instance, Disneyland sees a major influx in guests. Same goes for the holiday seasons, like around spring break and throughout the month of December. However, the crowd levels tend to simmer down post spring break leading up to summer vacation and during the back to school months, aka August and September. But even if your trip still manages to fall around the peak season times, the biggest thing you need to be aware of is the local crowd, since a good chunk of Disneyland's clientele is made up of mostly locals. Typically, locals and annual pass holders flock to the parks in the evenings and on the weekends. So if you can plan your park visits in the middle of the week and hit the ground early first thing in the morning, then you should be able to get ahead of the game and not get stuck in forever long lines. Okay, don't take the newest queue for granted. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway is the newest ride in Disneyland, meaning its lines have the potential of being an hour long wait or more. Usually you can avoid the 60 plus minute waits by hitting this ride up first thing in the morning as your first attraction of the day. Now be aware that it's really the attraction wait at the very far back of Disneyland. So just be aware that you got a long walk from the front of the park or take the monorail in to Tomorrowland and then walk back to Toontown. However, there are way worse things and having to stand in the runaway railway queue. There are so many Easter eggs and puns and interactive elements wrapping around the line, so keep your eyes peeled and see how many you can find while you wait. Here are a few of our favorite secrets for you to find, just to get the ball rolling. First, take a look at those movie posters. Each one is a reimagined and Disney-fied version of classic movies and musicals. Second, there are several underrated shorts highlighted throughout this queue, but I adore the holiday scene that represents the Pluto's Christmas tree episode right down to the Santa candles. And one more, and this one's a big one, when you get to the Fantasia section of this queue, that's when things start to get even more immersive. Keep an eye on Sorcerer Mickey's costume for a magical surprise. All right, number three on our list is attempting the goat trick. Want to make Big Thunder Mountain Railroad feel even faster? Then you're going to need to know about the goat trick. On the second lift hill of the coaster, find the goat that's standing innocently on a boulder with a not-so-innocent stick of dynamite in his mouth. If you keep an eye on this little guy until you lose sight of him, it'll make your ride through feel way more intense. You can also play I Spy with those Disney dolls. During a 2008 refurbishment of It's a Small World in Disneyland, 29 Disney characters were added to the attraction, including Pinocchio, Mulan, Simba, and Lilo in Stitch. See if you can find them all, you're not gonna see them in Disney World. So next, it's time to rethink your Genie Plus purchase. It may be tempting to purchase Genie Plus for your upcoming Disneyland trip, but before you commit, there's something big you need to know first. Not every ride is available on Genie Plus. In fact, some of your favorites are gonna be missing from the list completely. The rides you won't find listed as Genie Plus options for both Disneyland and Disney California Adventure include the following. For Disneyland, Alice in Wonderland, Astro Orbiter, Casey Jr. Circus Train, Chippendales Gadget Coaster, Davy Crockett's Explorer Canoes, my favorite, Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage, Jungle Cruise, King Arthur Carousel, Mad Tea Party, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride, Pinocchio's Daring Journey, Pirates of the Caribbean, Snow White's Enchanted Wish, Storybook Land, Canal Boats, Peter Pan's Flight, and Rise of the Resistance, and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, since those have individual lightning lanes that are not included for the Genie Plus price. For California Adventure, you got the Golden Zephyr, the Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind, Jesse's Critter Carousel, Jumpin' Jellyfish, The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, Luigi's Rollickin' Roadsters, Mater's Junkyard Jamboree, Pixar Pal Around, Silly Symphony Swings, and 
Radiator Springs Racers, that's also an individual lightning lane. So if you're keeping count, that's 17 rides that you won't be able to skip the lines for even if you purchase Disney Genie Plus. Genie Plus can still be useful for the selection of rides that are available through the premium service, as well as the unlimited photo pass downloads you'll receive that day, but it's best to talk it over with your family before making a decision one way or another. Next Disneyland ride hack, consider starting with dark rides. At the start of the day, lots of guests will make a beeline to rides like Space Mountain, Rise of the Resistance, and of course, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, like we just talked about. But before you do the exact same thing, consider not following those crowds instead. If you decide to hit up some of the classic Disneyland dark rides first, like Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, and Indiana Jones Adventure, then you can get on these bad boys with little to no weight. This is a really great trick if you're gonna have more than one day in the park anyways, giving you the chance to spend one morning getting in lines for the most popular attractions, then spending the second morning hitting up as many classic dark rides in one go with no lines. Other good ones for this are Peter Pan's Flight, Mr. Toad, Snow White, and Pinocchio, all over there arranged uh, around the carousel in Fantasyland, so you can hit those up real fast. So you might be able to get on your favorite Disneyland rides even earlier with even fewer crowds. How do you pull this one off? Early entry. If you're staying at one of the Disneyland owned hotels during your vacation, then you're gonna be able to enter the parks 30 minutes before everyone else can. But be warned, not every ride will be open during early entry. Rides like Rise of the Resistance and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway won't be operational until the parks officially open their gates for everyone. And the same goes for Radiator Springs Racers at Disney California Adventure. However, you will be able to get on other popular rides during early entry, like Space Mountain in Disneyland, Web Slingers, a Spider-Man adventure in DCA, and several other attractions which you can find listed in the early entry section of the Disneyland website. Did you know you can ride the Matterhorn two different ways? This snow-capped, abominable snowman-infested mountainous coaster has two potential routes you can take. Track one is on the Fantasyland side of the mountain, aka the left, while track two is on the Tomorrowland side, the right. Rumor has it that the Fantasyland track is the jerkier of the two, but honestly, neither is exactly smooth sailing. So if you have any neck or back issues whatsoever, or you know, if rough roller coasters tend to give you a headache that you have a hard time shaking, then consider this your warning. Matterhorn can beat you up. The monorail might be a complimentary transportation service provided by Disneyland, but the way it operates feels more like a Disneyland ride. What do I mean by that? Well, you will have to wait in a line to get on this classic attraction, and once you reach the terminal inside Tomorrowland, you will have to get off. You can't just stay on and keep riding it round and round all day long like you can in Disney World. Trust me, I tried with my child who was a monorail fanatic. The best thing about this monorail ride, however, is that those who ride it into Tomorrowland will get to skip over the main entrance lines for the park. But yes, you'll still have to have valid theme park tickets and park pass reservations in order to hop aboard in downtown Disney. All right, the traditional Space Mountain in Disneyland definitely gives the version in Disney World a run for its money. But sometimes Disneyland Space Mountain competes against itself with its seasonal overlays. In the past, we've seen Space Mountain become Ghost Galaxy for Halloween, truly terrifying, like I was really scared, and Rockin' Space Mountain with Red Hot Chili Pepper soundtrack. But recently, the overlay we see happening for Space Mountain during certain occasions throughout the year, especially around the beginning of May for May the 4th, is Hyper Space Mountain. During this overlay, you'll find Find yourself in the middle of an intergalactic showdown between the Resistance and the First Order. This retheme includes a new Star Wars soundtrack and familiar Star Wars theming projected throughout the ride. You can find out if Hyperspace Mountain or Ghost Galaxy or the others are taking place during your upcoming visit by checking on the Disneyland website ahead of time. And of course, we'll have it in our newsletter if you're a subscriber. Now we've got a hack for tracking down shorter queue lines that you don't have to pay for. We're all about cutting down our ride wait times while also saving a buck or two, which is why using the free single rider lines for select Disneyland attractions can end up being really nifty. Single rider queues are available in Disneyland for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run, Matterhorn Bobsleds, and Space Mountain. Single rider queues are also available in Disney California Adventure for Goofy Sky School, Incredicoaster, Radiator Springs Racers, Grizzly River Run, Web Slingers, a Spider-Man Adventure, and Soarin' Around the World. Just keep in mind that single rider queues are subject to availability and don't guarantee you a shorter wait time, but on those days when the parks are ultra busy, it never hurts to try it out. 
And you should also learn about the Buddy Pass system. Monsters, Inc., Mike and Sully to the rescue over in Disney California Adventure sometimes has a very special and very free line skipping service that you can use. And no, it's not a single rider line this time. The Buddy Pass works similar to the single rider lines, but instead of going on the ride alone, you'll be allowed to enter through the exit of the ride with one other person, meaning you could board this attraction potentially a lot sooner than you would if you were just waiting in the regular standby queue. You can ask a cast member at the front of the ride if they're distributing buddy passes that day and if you and your buddy are eligible to get one. Then a cast member will hand you a physical buddy pass ticket to show that you're allowed to enter through the exit of the ride. In the past we've seen buddy passes handed out at other attractions too but recently it seems like Mike and Sully to the rescue are still your best bet on finding them. Okay, you need to hit up Rise of the Resistance before it closes. Well, of course you do, but wait, there's more. Disneyland likes to stay up and party, but not all of its rides tend to do the same. Depending on how late Disneyland stays open, Rise of the Resistance usually closes its queue off two hours before the park calls it quits. So if the park is open until midnight, Rise of the Resistance would close its line around 10 p.m. This has always happened, no, but a lot of the time. Fantasyland also has several rides that close in anticipation of the fireworks. So if castle fireworks are happening on the day of your visit, make sure you have everything you want ridden in Fantasyland at least an hour before the fireworks begin. My best advice, check the Disneyland app, select the ride tip board, and scroll down to the rides you want to know more about. Not only will the ride tip board give you forecasted weights throughout the day for each ride, it'll also tell you about its height requirements, thrill types, and its hours of operation. Speaking of the Disneyland app, this is a great way to keep an eye on the current wait times too. You can look at live updates on the ride tip board, but if you tap on the teardrop shaped icon at the bottom of the screen, you're going to be able to pull up an entire map of the park. And that's going to show you not only where rides are located and what their wait times are, but it'll also show you other locations too, like where character meet and greets are happening, what dining is available near you, which restrooms are the closest, you know, the important stuff. So listen for messages from the past. The Finding Nemo Submarine Voyage is an underwater voyage to the reefs and ocean off the coast of Australia, where you're going to search for Nemo. Again! Before Nemo and friends took over this attraction, however, the original submarine voyage this ride used to be themed around was inspired by the movie 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The next time you climb aboard, listen closely to the on-ride audio. Even with its new dialogue that better fits the Finding Nemo theming, you'll still hear references to the original submarine voyage. Listen for mentions of the sonar hydrophones and the captain's comment about seeing sea serpents and mermaids, because those are direct shout-outs to our OG submarine friend of the past. All right, it's time to upgrade your web slinging game. If you're looking to up your game and score big on web slingers, a Spider-Man adventure, just head on over to the web slingers gift shop inside Avengers Campus. You know, maybe you got a few bucks to burn. The web slingers ride uses gesture recognition technology. So all that you and your Avengers team, your friends and family, need to do to play is wave your hands and work together to rack up your group score throughout the ride. But to enhance this experience, of course, the Web Slingers gift shop sells web power bands to unlock even more interactive ride options. You can purchase add-ons that'll further switch up your gameplay options, giving you access to more powers and abilities inspired by Spider-Man, Iron Man, Ghost Spider, and Rescue during the course of the ride. Now, this is very, very cool, especially if you're local, because again, you can have sort of a different game each time you go. But if you're just going one time and you're only riding this ride one time, then maybe spending a bunch of money on something to enhance the experience isn't worth it unless you want that souvenir sitting at home. All right, when you're done slinging webs, then you're ready for the big race through Cars Land. Toward the end of Radiator Springs Racers, right before your thrilling side-by-side -side race against the other car full of guests traveling next to you, which I never, ever, ever win, never, never have I won it, so don't ride in a car with me, you will enter through one of two scenes. You'll either be sent to Luigi's for new tires or be sent to Ramon's for detailing. No matter which scene you get to experience here, both will wind you up in the exact same place at the starting line. Pirates of the Caribbean has no shortage of audio animatronic pirates, but only the pros know that not all of these pirates originated in the California park. Several of the audio animatronics were actually added to the Dark Boat ride during its 1997 refurb. And where, oh, where did these new pirates come from? The former World of Motion attraction at Epcot, which closed in 1996. You'll find most of these Epcot animatronics in the village scene, though you'd never know they once had a different East Coast home unless you were told, which is why we're telling you now, because I love World of Motion. It was one of my favorite rides in 1985. 
So much like Disney World, Disneyland and DCA are also big believers in the Rider Switch system, so use it if you need it. Here's how it works. Rider Switch allows one or more adult guests to wait with a non-riding guest who can't or doesn't want to ride an attraction, while other members of the group go ahead and experience the ride. First, talk to a cast member at the front of the ride to let them know you want to set up Rider Switch. After you're all set up, either using your magic band or key card, the first group will enter into the standard queue. When the first group completes their ride through, they'll reunite with the adults who hung back with the non-rider. Now it's the second group's turn to ride while the first group hangs back with the non-rider. The adults who didn't ride with the first group are now allowed to enter the ride without waiting in the main standby line. This usually means they'll walk through the lightning lane queue instead. Just keep in mind that this second group normally just consists of around two members from your party unless otherwise stated by the cast member up front. So the by far scariest ride experience you're gonna come across during your trip to Disney California Adventure is the Halloween version of Guardians of the Galaxy Mission Breakout. During the day, Mission Breakout is the standard Marvel-themed drop tower you know and love with randomized 80s songs and quirky quips from the Guardians crew. But at night, during Halloween time, the ride transforms into Guardians of the Galaxy monsters after dark. This version is so intimidating that DCA puts up a warning before you enter the queue, stating it may not be suitable for younger riders. And that's because this version of the ride will have you rocking out to a punk slash dark rock song while coming face to face with, you guessed it, a monster. And and guess who has to pretend to be bait for this monster so Rocket can go save his little buddy Groot? I'll give you a hint, it's not Mickey Mouse. When this overlay is available, the regular Mission Breakout ride will normally close around 4 p.m. and typically reopen just an hour later, as the Monsters After Dark version. The line does tend to get pretty lengthy for this one because it's still a good time, monsters and all, but if you're planning on attending the After Hours Halloween party, Oogie Boogie Bash, wait times are gonna be more reasonable. Some Disney World rides will keep you all nice and cool in the AC during your experience, or at the very least, shaded. But other rides like Storybook Canals, Sailing Ship Columbia, Davy Crockett Explorer Canoes, those are going to keep you out in the sun for the entire length of the ride. And that's not just going to get you sweaty, it's going to get you crispy too, so slather on the sunscreen. The same thing goes for rides with outdoor queues like Autopia, Casey Jr. Circus Train, and It's a Small World. Basically, if you see a line wrapped around outside and you know you're going to be standing in it for longer than five minutes, reapply the sunscreen. It's something to do in line, right? Want to know the secret to scoring mega points on Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters? It lies in the second room of the ride. At the space where Zerg stands and turns, revealing and concealing targets with his cape, there's a small Z on his chest that does not look like the other targets, but it totally is. Not only is it a target, it's worth 50,000 points if you can hit it. Fair warning, this target is trickier to score than you might think. Even if it looks like you squarely got it, this target only registers about half of the time, but when the stars align, the point payoff is great. No Indiana Jones adventure is exactly the same, and there's a couple of reasons as to why. First off, the start of your tour of the Temple of the Forbidden Eye will place you in front of three different doors, one of youth, one of riches, and one of knowledge. I like all those things. Now, your 12-person Jeep will go through one of these doors, and depending on which one you enter, Sala, aka one of Indy's near and dear adventurer friends, will make a comment at the end of the ride that corresponds with your specific door. Secondly, listen to the Indy figure at the end of the ride. He's got lots to say, and you'll more than likely hear him say something new each time you adventure with him again. And finally, each ride vehicle is equipped with motion simulator tech that's capable of almost 160,000 possible combinations, virtually guaranteeing that every adventure is going to be unique, but it's definitely going to be bumpy. Usually folks who prefer going on roller coasters at night enjoy them more around then just because the ride feels 10 times faster when it's dark. And yeah, the same can be said about Big Thunder Mountain Railroad too, but there's another key reason why you should be riding this coaster once the sun goes down in Disneyland. Big Thunder Mountain has some really cool cave effects that take place inside the ride's last lift hill. We're talking dynamite, sparks, and explosions all around you. While you can kind of sort of see these digital effects during the day, they're so much more prominent and realistic looking at night. Same thing can be said about the tunnels on the Incredicoaster ride over at Disney California Adventure. While you can still see the family of supers inside the tunnels during the day, their lighted superpower effects are all the more vibrant when the sun sets. Not to mention, you get to see Pixar Pier all lit up from down below too, and that's core memory content right there. 
Disneyland loves their seasonal overlays, but there's one overlay that sticks around longer than the others, and it happens over at the Haunted Mansion. Haunted Mansion Holiday transforms this ghoulish dark ride into a different ghoulish dark ride that's heavy on the Nightmare Before Christmas theming. Throughout the ride, you'll meet characters like Jack Skellington, Sally, Oogie Boogie, Lock, Shock, and Barrel, and a few other delightful yet frightful friends who are all ready to celebrate both the Halloween and Christmas season. This overlay starts in September and lasts throughout the rest of the year and on into some of January too. However, you're going to want to keep an eye on when your trip is scheduled because you might end up missing out on both versions of the Haunted Mansion if you're not careful. Haunted Mansion does have to close for a lengthy amount of time in order to make this overlay happen and then to switch back to the original Haunted Mansion. So keep an eye on the Disneyland website and the DFB website too for updates on when this overlay will start and how long it'll take for the ride to be back up and running again. If seeing the Disneyland fireworks, watching the parades, or finding a spot for the World of Color Light and Water show in Disney California Adventure are not major priorities for you, you can still use these show times to your benefit. Lines for rides will die down when the big park shows like this begin, giving you the chance to get in some last minute rides or hit up rides you weren't able to get in line for earlier because they were so packed out before. Just don't forget what we talked about earlier though, Fantasyland rides do close before the fireworks start and other rides in DCA also tend to close before World of Color, which I'll talk more about here shortly. So just to reiterate, check on the ride times on your Disneyland app and make sure the ride you're waiting for will still be available during the shows. So while there are slight differences between Disney World and Disneyland's Genie Plus services, one thing is true about both of them. You can book one lightning lane at a time with Genie Plus. You can book another lightning lane immediately after you use your first or after that 120 minute cool down time, whichever comes first. The 120 minute rule, however, can lead you to holding multiple lightning lanes at once. This is called stacking your lightning lanes and you want to learn how to do it. For example, if you book Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run for 6.30 p.m. when it's 12.32 p.m. currently, you'll be able to make a new selection at 2.32 p.m. even if you haven't used your Millennium Falcon one yet. And that means you can make another reservation for a ride like Haunted Mansion and use it immediately. And then you can book another lightning lane immediately after that without waiting two hours again. Meanwhile, your Millennium Falcon booking stays valid throughout all of this and will be ready for you to use at 6.30. Did you know Jungle Cruise wasn't always the hearty har har punny boat ride we know and love today? According to our friends over at allears.net, the first version of the Jungle Cruise was actually very serious and based on Walt Disney's True Life Adventure series. It wasn't until a few years later that the Jungle Cruise skippers began adding jokes and funny stories, and that's why we can truly appreciate the backside of water joke no matter how many times we hear it. Your kid's first ride on Dumbo the Flying Elephant might be a major milestone you want to document, but it might be tricky to get a picture of them while in motion. Fortunately, Disneyland's got a solution. Behind the attraction is a replica Dumbo gondola that stays completely stationary, meaning you can get a good picture of the kids without all the blurry faces spinning on by. Having extra patience is just good advice for life, but for some Disneyland rides, you're gonna need that extra patience when you didn't realize how long of a wait these can be. For example, rides like Casey Jr. Circus Train, Chippendale Gadget Coaster, and the Mark Twain Riverboat only have one vehicle. So even though these rides aren't the most popular in the park, they still take a little time between riders to experience. So the combination of a relatively long wait with probably a little kid next to you and all outdoors, especially in the summer can get a little overwhelming. Be prepared. Don't forget to celebrate the seasons in Cars Land. Cars Land receives special holiday overlays and decorations for both Halloween and Christmas. While Radiator Springs Racers pretty much stays the same year round, Luigi's Rollickin' Roadsters transforms into Luigi's Honkin' Halloween and Luigi's Joy to the World. While Mater's Junkyard Jamboree becomes Mater's Graveyard Jamboree and Mater's Jingle Jamboree. And it's also so fun to see all of the very unique decorations they have all around Cars Land. Of course, they're all cars themed and made with things that would be in and around cars. And it's just definitely worth taking a half an hour just to explore those lands when they have their holiday overlays. Autopia may seem like your typical controlled go-kart setting, and for the most part, that's what it is. But back in April 2017, Tomorrowland decided to give this classic attraction a little more character, literally. Thanks to this update, new figures of the humanoid robot Asimo, which stands for Advanced Step in Innovative Mobility, as well as his robo-friend Bird, were added to the attraction. 
Okay, it is time to impress your friends and family by getting the highest score in the vehicle when you ride Toy Story Midway Mania. Thank you, thank you. No autographs, please. In each of the Midway games featured during this ride in Disney California Adventure, there will be at least one specialty Easter egg that'll cause a bonus of high value targets to appear. For example, during the Flying Tossers game, if players can toss rings over each of the aliens inside the rocket ship, then a giant robot will appear and open its mouth, exposing another rather large target with a high point value. Depending on how much time is left in the game, this robot mouth could open multiple times with higher point values each time it does. This is one of my favorite Disneyland secrets, and it's not exactly a ride hack, but it'll at least make this whole situation make more sense to you. If you can't stand the Wonderland heat in the Alice in Wonderland ride, then blame Mr. Toad. Alice in Wonderland was Disneyland's first two-level ride-through attraction. Due to spatial constraints, Alice had to be built on top of Mr. Toad's wild ride. That's why when you board Alice in Wonderland, the temperatures seem normal at first until you enter the room of the card soldiers. Then you may notice quite the temperature change. When your ride vehicle enters the playing card room of Wonderland, you're actually feeling the heat from the devilish scene of hell in Mr. Toad's wild ride going on beneath you. Heat rises even in Wonderland. While several Disneyland and Disney California Adventure rides will have lightning lanes available via Disney Genie Plus, there are a few rides you won't be able to book and you'll have to pay for a separate individual lightning lane. At Disneyland and DCA, these are available for Rise of the Resistance for around $20 to $25 per person per ride through, Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway for around $20 per person, and Radiator Springs Racers is around $7 to $18, depending on the time. For the most part, you can probably skip the individual Lightning Lane prices altogether and hit up these rides earlier on in the day for potentially shorter wait times. However, if you're visiting during a peak season time and you want to make sure you're not going to waste a chunk of your day just waiting in line, then you can hold up to two individual lightning lanes per day, even if they're located in two different parks. You'll just need to make sure you got a valid park hopper ticket already purchased and ready to go. For some, the Pixar Pal Around is a 10 times scarier Disney California adventure ride than Guardians of the Galaxy Monsters After Dark. But not because there are any monsters attacking this Ferris wheel. It's because some of those Ferris wheel gondolas swing, and they swing a lot. The swinging gondolas of the Pixar Pal Around are supposed to be a fun, unique take on the traditional Ferris wheel experience, but it's definitely not fun for everyone. If you'd prefer your Ferris wheel ride to be less swingy and horrifying, you can choose to ride inside one of the fixed gondolas instead for a much tamer ride through where all you have to be terrified of is the sheer height. Just make sure you enter into the correct queue on the left hand side. So maybe you shouldn't hit up single rider for this ride. Earlier, I recommended trying out the single rider queues for potentially shorter wait times. But if you're a big Star Wars enthusiast, and if it's always been your dream to pilot the Millennium Falcon, then you might not want to risk getting in the single rider line for Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. More often than not, single riders will be put in the position of gunner or engineer when they use that single rider queue here, and they won't be able to request a certain role since single rider's sole purpose is to help cast members fill in the remaining available seats. I'm not saying a single rider will never be put in the driver's seat, but if you're wanting to up your chances of piloting this hunk of junk, then the standard queue or the lightning lane queue may be the better option for you. When springtime rolls around, Disney California Adventure gets ready to celebrate their food and wine festival. And while we love trying out all the different festival food booths, you're also going to find us riding a certain flight simulator more often than usual to help break up all our snacking and drinking throughout the day. Because during the months of March and April, Disney California Adventure has been bringing back the original 2001 Soarin' Over California during its food and wine festival. Soarin' Over California was replaced with the version we have now, Soarin' Around the World, back in 2016. When Soarin' Over California is playing in the Grizzly Peak area, you'll get the chance to fly over famous California-based landmarks like Yosemite Valley, Lake Tahoe, Monterey Bay, and Big Sur. Okay, now it's time to talk about early rod closures over in Disney California Adventure. Because of the World of Color 1 show that takes place on the water in front of Pixar Pier, many Pixar Pier rides or even just some of the surrounding flat rides close by will shut down early. According to the Disneyland website, these are the rides and attractions that close before World of Color begins. I know I've said this a billion times now during the course of this video, but I'm going to say it again for emphasis. Please check the Disneyland app as well as Disneyland's entertainment schedule so none of these early closures catch you by surprise and you get to ride everything that you want to ride before it closes. 
What better way to immerse yourself in Disney California Adventure than by jumping on that classic red car trolley and riding it around the park? The red car trolley runs continuously throughout the day, making four pit stops at the following locations. Buena Vista Street near the Disney California Adventure Park main entrance. Carthay Circle across from Carthay Circle Restaurant, Hollywood Boulevard near the Disney Animation Building, and Sunset Boulevard near the Hyperion Theater. So if you want to give your tootsies a break, go ahead and climb aboard. Also, I don't know if they're still doing this, but my son was once the honorary mayor or the honorary trolley opener or something like that. So if you are at the trolley car first thing in the morning and you have a little kid, they may get a special set of ears and that commendation. If you liked the DCA red car trolley, then you're definitely going to want to know about the Main Street vehicles of Disneyland, too. Frequently, one of the four different types of vintage vehicles will transport guests up and down Main Street, USA, leading them up to Sleeping Beauty Castle or back to City Hall. These vehicles include the horse-drawn streetcar, which is an old-fashioned trolley pulled by a horse, a jitney, basically an early automobile with no roof, a fire engine, or an omnibus, kind of like the double-deckers you see in London. If riding one of these Main Street vehicles is on your Disneyland bingo, card, make sure you track them down early in the day. These vehicles tend to stop transporting guests a little after 2 p.m. or sometimes even earlier. Though you're not going to see the vehicle's daily schedule pop up on the ride tips board on your Disneyland app, they will still show up on the Disneyland website. Goofy Sky School in Disney California Adventure is a classic carnival roller coaster, kind of like a a wild mouse coaster, but a lot less sketchy. However, much like an Omnimover dark ride like Haunted Mansion and The Little Mermaid, once the vehicles enter into the boarding station, they're not stopping. So you're going to have to board quickly before the vehicle takes on the lift hill again. Don't panic, the vehicle moves slowly enough to give you time to board and buckle in and a cast member can stop it if you absolutely need extra time. Just be prepared and know in advance what you wanna do with your stuff. There isn't really any space to store bags in the loading station, so you're more than likely gonna need to sling your bag or backpack around your legs and set it on the floorboard between your feet. For oversized items, you can leave them with a non-rider or with a cast member at the station. Otherwise, everything goes in the flight with ya. Depending on your Grizzly River Run ride through over in Disney California Adventure, you might get through those rapids unscathed with just a damp shirt tail or soggy bottom. But if the rapids have deemed you as the chosen one, or if your raft floats past one of the geysers at just the right time, you will get soaked, bathtub soaked. On those hotter California days, the lines for Grizzly River Run are going to be dense, which is why you'll either want to get in line for it shortly after the park opens or toward the end of the day. Now, the earlier you can ride, the better off you'll be, we think. If you get drenched in the morning, you got the California sun to rely on. That'll get you all nice and dry as the day progresses. But if you wait to ride until the sun goes down, you're going to have to deal with being wet for the rest of the night until you're back at your hotel room. And that can get cold. That may not be a huge deal for you, but there's something about ending your day soggy that just doesn't sit well with us. Unless you're staying at the Grand Floridian Resort and Spa, and then you can literally just walk upstairs to your room after the ride and get chained, since there's an entrance to the hotel right there inside Grizzly Peak. So did the mad tea party get to you? Or maybe you took one too many plummets during mission breakout. When your stomach or head is feeling upset after a rather intense ride through and you forget to pack any over the counter medications that could help you settle the wooziness, then you're gonna need to know where the first aid centers are located. The first aid centers are free for guests to use and have nurses on call to help you with any non-emergency situations, like if you need band-aids or tummy soothers. In Disneyland Park, the first aid is located at the end of Main Street USA next to the baby care center. And Disney California Adventures First Aid Center is located next to the Chamber of Commerce on Buena Vista Street. Note that the Baby Care Center is separate from this location. Now it's time for you to meet Jingles. Jingles is the lead horse of King Arthur Carousel and can be easily identified by her shiny gold bells, hence the Jingles name. Jingles was Walt Disney's personal favorite horse on the carousel, which is why Jingles now has such an interesting backstory. In 2008, Jingles received a makeover to celebrate Julie Andrews, the practically perfect Mary Poppins herself, and her 44 years of service to the Walt Disney Company. Imagineers thought that dedicating the lead carousel horse to the actress would be a fitting tribute since Mary Poppins had ridden a similar carousel horse in the film. That's how Jingles got her current blue, pink, and gold color scheme along with Julie Andrews' initials and more Mary Poppins themed features. There's one specific part of the Disneyland Railroad that you are not going to want to skip out on, and that's the section that connects Tomorrowland to Main Street USA. While the rest of this train ride is pretty straightforward and loops you around the park to help you get from land to land, the tracks leading up to Main Street USA will take you through an extended tunnel first. And this tunnel features Grand Canyon and Primeval World dioramas. 
The Grand Canyon backdrop is peaceful with displays of several different plants and animals along the rim of the canyon, but the primeval world backdrop brings on the drama with its intense score, molten lava, and dinosaur battles. Come on, Walt Disney World Railroad, where are your dino battles? Disneyland and Disney California Adventure are truly parks for all ages, just like the good Walt intended. That's why over 40 rides between these parks have zero height requirement. I'm not going to list all of them here for you because that double the length of our video, but I will name a few fan favorites. In Disneyland, some of the rides that are good for all heights include Pirates of the Caribbean, Peter Pan's Flight, The Jungle Cruise, and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. Meanwhile, over in Disney California Adventure, some of the attractions that are all rides for all riders include Monsters, Inc., Mike and Sully to the Rescue, Pixar Pal Around, The Little Mermaid, Ariel's Undersea Adventure, and Web Slinger's A Spider-Man Adventure. You can find height requirements for all the rides on the Disneyland app and on the website. Stuck in a lengthy queue for a while? Why not order some food? Thanks to the mobile order function on your Disneyland app, you can order and schedule a time to go pick up your quick service meal even while you're waiting around in line. Just keep in mind that your food won't automatically be ready during whatever time frame you choose. That mobile order return time is when you're supposed to arrive, not when your food's gonna be done. So once you make it over to the restaurant during your selected time frame, alert the kitchen that you're there via the Disneyland app so they can get your food all prepped and ready for you on the spot. But this is a great way to pass time in line while you're waiting for rides. If you watch the window above Snow White's Enchanted Wish, you may just see someone looking out every so often. Yep, it's the evil queen and she is definitely watching you. This happens about every 20 seconds or so because the queen's just that nosy and it is very creepy and very fun. Your Genie Plus purchase can do more than just help you skip the ride lines. When you purchase Genie Plus, you'll also be able to download all your PhotoPass downloads from your day. Yep, that's right, it's different in Disneyland. Additionally, you'll also unlock specialty augmented reality lenses for your phone's camera. And you'll be able to listen to audio tours themed specifically to the park area you're in. Oh, Disneyland rides, we love you so much, and you can love them even more now that you know how to hack them to make your Disneyland and DCA park experiences even better. Before we wrap up today, here's that QR code again for our free digital guide that'll help you plan your three perfect days in Disneyland. Just let us know your name and email, and we'll get that guide to you faster than you can say see you real soon. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Vlog, and we will see you real soon.